Pretty cool. Okay, you're in here. Okay, there's three, four, five. You, yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, we're going to do a little review from uh, last week's message. Hopefully, only take a few minutes here. And what we covered, um, what we covered last week, uh, we started a new series. It's called The Common Faith. The Common Faith. I need a volunteer, somebody that has some good handwriting. Uh, I need you to write Common Faith, and there's eight points of the Common Faith. Okay, a little review for everybody. Somebody, volunteer, somebody? Are you, can you reach, can you reach that? You can reach that, right? Sorry. I can't extend my. Okay, okay, so Lucy's going to help me out here. She's going to, just write at the top, common faith. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, I need some volunteers. Let's, let's, let's do it like in school, let's raise your hand. Okay, and I want you to give me the first, okay, first of Somebody please tell us, what is this, what's this phrase all about? What do we mean by the common faith? Common faith. Amber. For the believers to be in oneness. For the believers to be in oneness, she says. So, so, so you're saying the common faith is for the believers to be in oneness? Right. Okay, somebody expand a little bit on that. We'll, we'll build on that. That was good. Anybody else? It's available yes. to yeah. everyone. Oh, available to everyone? Okay. Principles that like all the believers can fellowship on. Okay, the principles that all the believers could can fellowship on. That's good. Anybody else? Yes, Danushka. Every Christian believes these. Every Christian believes these, right? Yeah, very good. So we could say like every we could say genuine. So what do you mean by a Christian? Because I used to call myself a Christian before I was actually a Christian. People would say, I remember when I was in, in high school. And uh, people would ask me, uh, you know, what are you, what religion you are? And I was like, well, I go to church. I was thinking in my mind, well, I, I go to church, and I go to church, and I hear some things about the Bible. I guess I'm a Christian. I would say, um, I'm a Christian. What do you mean by a Christian? Believe into Christ. Believe into Christ? Okay, anybody else to add to that? Yes, Brother Pat. Well, uh, a Christian. common faith, can I talk can I just say a word on that? Well, could we develop a little bit about the Christian? We took another little tangent. Okay. First, like, what is, that, okay. what, what is the Christian? He was saying somebody that believes in Christ. Anybody else about well, what a Christian is? Well, in Christ uh, is to have faith in him. Amen. So um, that's why this is called the common faith, means the essential things of the Christian faith. Amen. 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 That is that uh, of our salvation. That's right. Amen. All right. Very good. Hey, that's good. That's great. So number one, the first item of the common faith is. Anybody remember this? Bible. Bible. Put it up there. Bible. Bible. It's a collection of books. What's so special about it? It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Hallelujah. Okay, number two. Number two is triune God. Somebody said triune God, right? Okay, so God is three and he's one. It's a triune God. Third item of the common faith. Anybody remember this one? Zion, you shared the message, right? What's number three? Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's right. Jesus Christ. And, and, and this item includes the incarnation of Christ, right? Jesus Christ. And anything like his human living that he lived, or, or just mainly the incarnation of Christ, right? Okay. Divinity and humanity. He's the complete God and he's the perfect man, right? Okay. Item number four. That's, pretty, that's good. good. That's four and five. So you can write his, his, uh, his death on the cross or his redemption, his dying for our sins, accomplishing redemption. And, and then number five would be his resurrection. Praise the Lord. Amen. Our Christ was raised from the dead. Amen. All right, next one. After he was raised, when he was raised, that's from... Ascension, ascension, right? Ascension. He ascended far above all the heavens. Praise the Lord. The next one. 
Number seven. Salvation. Salvation. Salvation, which I believe, uh, Zion, last week you talked about repentance, right? Yeah. What would else do you, and forgiveness of, and believing. And believing. And believing. Repentance and, and, believing. and believing. It's like what, what, what Pat was talking about, believing into Christ. All right. And last well, actually, included in this is also when we, when we repent and we believe into Christ, we, we, we're, we, we become members of Christ. We become members of the one body of Christ, right? We're regenerated and we're children of God, members of the body of Christ. And the last one is his second coming. Very good. Awesome. Okay. So, and, and like Amber said in the very beginning, these, these items of the common faith, if we as Christians, if we hold to these, we can, you can be one with any Christian, any believer. If we focus on these items, whenever you meet a believer, you know, this is what, what I, I try to practice whenever I meet a Christian. I try to enter into a sweet fellowship with them because they're my, they're my brothers and sisters. They're fellow members of the body of Christ. But once we as believers, we start focusing on other things like our practices, then that's when we start getting all divided, you know, and you know, there's so many different practices. We talked about that last week. All right. The common faith, very good. This week, we're going to focus on the first one, and we have two weeks on this, the Bible being the word of God. And today, there's mainly two, two, two main topics. We're going to talk about the Bible as the written word of God. If you want to sit down, let's see you can now. Thank you. Uh, the Bible is the written word of God. And then Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he is the living word of God. Um, and this is a really, really incredible topic to see. We're going to see some things here. Let's look at uh, the outline. And in Roman 1, it says the Bible, Scripture is the written word of God. All right. And uh, let's read 2 Timothy 3.16 together. Ready? Go. All Scripture is God-breathed and profitable for teaching, for conviction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. All scripture is God breathed. It's God's breath. It's God's breath. Okay. Um, uh, I think many of you, if not just about all of you are aware, we just started a Bible reading challenge. Amen. Did you start that Bible reading challenge? Yes. If you haven't started, you can start today. You know, it's the first week. It's uh, day uh, four. And um, it's really easy to catch up if you haven't started yet. Um, you just put it on, uh, you know, open up your version app. There's the audio. <laughs> just put it at 1.5 and you can catch up really fast. <laughs> just, no, you really can. You're right. that's, that's, what, that's what I did one of the, one of the past couple of days to, to catch up. And um, what, I, what I'm just really impressed with, you know, God has given us this gift, the Bible. I mean, the Bible is, it's one of the most incredible gifts to mankind, right? It's the two great gifts, right? What's, what's, one gift is the Bible. What's the other gift? The Spirit. God himself in Christ as the Spirit. He gifted himself to us and he dispensed himself into our spirit. So we have this gift. Inwardly, we have the Spirit, but we also have this. Oh, we have this. We have this. This. You know, I... I I know we all use our phones for, uh, for, for reading the Bible. I, th I think most of us do, right? It's just so convenient. You just like whip it out anywhere, anytime, any place, on the go, driving. You can just whip out your Bible. You can listen to it. You can read it. You know, the YouVersion app has like over 70 versions of the Bible in the New Testament or in, the, in English. It's such a blessing, right? But how many of you have a paper copy of the Bible? Raise your hand if you got a paper copy of the Bible. You know what? I don't know. I'm not, I, I, I'm not saying this to be like religious or to do things in just an outward way, but there is really something special to have your own Bible. Like, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I have my notes in it. I have some notes in here that are just like, if I read it right now, I'll probably cry. I'm even almost starting to cry right now thinking about this one note. You know, that I wrote in there because just having time with the Lord, my experience with other believers, you know, something came up and I wrote, you know, and but this is my Bible. This is my Bible. Nobody take this Bible away from me. I'm never giving this Bible to anybody. 
Well, somebody was being like, sent off to live on an island. Maybe I'll give them a few pages and tear them out. <laughs> okay, yeah, but you can't have my whole Bible, no. You can have some Job. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I would encourage you all to enjoy God's written word, the Bible. Get a paper copy and just, I used, in my first, in my first couple of years of being a Christian, you know, I became a Christian when I was about 19 years old. In my first couple of years, I don't know, I just didn't, I didn't want to mark it. I didn't want to mark it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to underline it. I didn't want to damage it. It just looked so nice. And it's like, I love the Bible. But I was like, but eventually I was like, I don't know. I just started to highlight, started to underline. Now there's like so much history here between me and the Lord. It's like verses that I pray read, verses that I enjoyed. I studied them. I wrote songs to some of these verses that are highlighted here. This is like very personal, you know. And, um, you know, I think it was like a week and a half ago. I went to Athens, Georgia. And uh, I went, I forget what I went there for. But anyway, I went to Athens to visit some believers there. And um, I took this Bible. And um, I came back home. And I thought I left it there. And I was like, oh, man, I left my Bible. Right. I was like, I was like really sad. You know, a couple of days went by. And then um, I was in one of the cars I don't normally use. I, 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 I went into that car, you know, and, and I saw my Bible there. I was like, my Bible. I was like, my Bible. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I really rejoiced. It was just that story of, uh, of uh, in King Josiah's time. Where they, where they lost God's word. You know, they lost the law, the book. You know, and it was like lost and somebody, somebody found it in the temple. It was like lost somewhere in the temple and they found it and they, and they brought it, eventually they read it and they brought it to King Josiah. He was like, whoa. It was like, it was kind of like that for me. You know, a couple weeks ago, just reading the Bible. But you know, I, I, I hope that we would all like develop this really like, it's not religious. It's not religious. Just a holy culture of reading the Bible, yeah. loving the Bible. You know, you read it, you can pray over it, you could put music to the Bible, sing it, um, just handle the Bible and just bring it into every avenue of your life. Um, I was thinking about just a couple of days ago, look at this verse, the first verse that's on this uh, sheet. No, the second verse, Matthew 4.4. 4. Let's read that together. But he answered, this is Jesus, okay? But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out through the mouth of God. I, I read this verse where I was thinking about it the other day, and I was thinking um, about um, the Lord Jesus. And I was thinking about him as a man, you know? And, uh, you know, sometimes... I don't know if you've been in some, some Bible studies where we study the book of Colossians, you know? And Colossians is this book where it emphasizes that, you know, the believers in Colossae, they had been um, holding on to their culture and their philosophy and their way of living and their life and everything like that. So it's a book on Christ versus culture mm -hmm. and how the Lord wants to, he wants to be our, you know, he wants to, he wants to replace our culture and constitute us with himself. Okay, so I was, I, was, I was thinking about this verse, and I was like, does Jesus, did, did Jesus have a culture? You ever thought about that? You know? Did he? Or was he just the son of God? Just, did he have a, you know? You know what I mean by culture? Like, what did he do? Well, he was Jewish, yeah, for sure. For sure he had a Jewish culture. I was thinking a little bit like deeper, like what did he do? What did he do in his free time? What did he? What 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 shows did he watch on uh, Netflix? What were his interests? What did he live off of? What does it say there? He lived off of every word that proceeds out through the mouth of God. And I was like, I was really impressed with that. I was just like, wow, yeah, I want to be just like Jesus. Don't you want to be like Jesus? Yeah. You know, live live on every word that proceeds from the mouth out of the mouth of God? Okay, you know, um, I just want to impress you with this. I feel like if the Lord could gain us this, this at this time, in this beginning of the semester, to be people who read the Bible, yeah. who love God's word, who really like handle it every day. 
Not because we're fulfilling a religious, uh, you know, duty, but because, um, you know, the Lord. See, the thing is, like, the more you read it, the more you're drawn. Because we'll, we'll learn eventually that the Bible testifies concerning the Lord Jesus. The Bible, it makes you wise into salvation. The Bible points you to the most wonderful person in the universe, the Lord Jesus. Okay, now listen to these verses. And like, and, uh, in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, he says, he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Okay, and then he says, you can let the word of Christ dwell in you richly by, by singing it, you know, by singing the word. And of course, um, you know, Paul says to Timothy, all scripture is God breathed and it's profitable for so many things. And, uh, you know, he wants us to be filled with his word, okay? But it, it's, it's not that descriptive, it's not that descriptive in the New Testament about how God wants his word to dwell in us. I, I don't know if you, but I, I discovered some verses in the book of Deuteronomy. Listen to this. If you have your Bible, open it up on your phone or whatever, okay? Look at this. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is how much we need to bring the Word of God into our everyday life. I don't know if you've ever read these verses. This is Deuteronomy chapter 6. You can jot that down too so you have it later, later in your paper. Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 through 9. And I'm reading out of the recovery version, but whatever, whatever version you have is fine. But um, if you have the recovery version, read it with me, okay? If you have another version, you can read it too. It might sound a little jumbled though. Ready? Uh, go, four through nine. Hear, O Israel, Jehovah is our God. Jehovah is one. And you shall love Jehovah your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be upon your heart. Okay, hold it there. This is, this is Moses, okay? This is Moses talking to God's people. Okay, verse six is like, these words which I command you today, and his words were God's words. Where God was speaking through him. He says, shall be on your heart. Now continue, verse seven through nine. And you shall repeat them to your children and speak about them when you sit in your house. And when you journey on the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall bind them on your hand as a sign, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Wow, isn't that cool? Well, so how involved should the Word of God be in our everyday life? It's extremely, like everything. When you get up, when you go down, when you're journeying along the way, write it on your doorpost, write it in your house. You know? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just amazing. And then if you, if you have physical children, you need to teach them the word of God. Right. And if you don't have like earthly human physical children, you need to get some spiritual children and, and, and speak to them, right? All the time. Anyway, I'm just really impressed. Like this is, you know, when, when Paul says in the, uh, in the New Testament, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, I like these verses in Deuteronomy because it shows you a little more detail, right? Okay, so um, I don't know. Does this resonate within you? Don't you aspire to have this kind of living as a believer? And for sure, if you start reading the Bible like this, start handling the Bible like this, you will begin to see more and more of Christ. Amen. We see more and more of this wonderful triune God man, Jesus Christ. He'll be revealed to you, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to begin to love him more. Yeah. The more you handle the word of God in a proper way, with an open heart, open spirit, and just with some prayer, just a little bit of prayer as you read, you will love the Lord Jesus intensely. Amen. You'll be drawn to him. Amen. Okay, let's go to this outline. Um, Okay, the Bible being the written word of God. Let's just read through these verses, okay? Uh, 2 Peter 1, 20, 21. We'll just go through all the verses. Ready? Go. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever born by the will of man, but men spoke from God while being born by the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, 27, and 44. And beginning from Moses and from all the prophets, 
He explained to them clearly in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things written in the law of Moses and the prophets and Psalms concerning me must be fulfilled. Okay, these verses in Luke 24 are really, really awesome. This is the Lord Jesus on, on the day of his resurrection. And there was a couple of his disciples. One of them was named Cleopas. The other, it's, it's a mystery. We don't know who he was. It doesn't give his name. But they were, they were walking away from Jerusalem after the Lord had died and was buried. And, you know, their, 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 their rabbi, Jesus, their leader, their, their savior, their Lord, he had been crucified. And they were, they were, they were really bummed out. And, and they were walking on this road to a city called, to a town uh, called Emmaus. And the Lord just uh, joined in with them in that walk. And it's kind of mysterious because they didn't recognize him. And he was, he was I'm paraphrasing, he's like, man, why are you guys all bummed out? And, 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 and he's like, he's like and, and they say, what you, you haven't heard? Where have you been? <laughs> they didn't recognize him. They kind of rebuked him, the Lord. And the Lord just kept talking to him. And it, I think it was like a seven mile journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus. Must have been a long walk. It takes about 15 minutes for a walk, for, for a mile, right? What's seven times 15? How long is that? Okay, so, so he was with them for a while. And according to these verses, um, I, I think the time also included maybe when, when eventually they got to their house and they invited him in and he, he was with them for a little bit. But anyway, there was like this long extended period of time. He was essentially, he was essentially having a Bible study with them as they were walking, as he was with them. And he was opening up the scriptures and he was telling them that everything in the Old Testament, you know how fat this Old Testament is? You know how many books is in the Old Testament? 39 books, right? A lot more than the New Testament. It's like, I'll show you. It's like about like, <laughs> something like this. It's like this. Okay, this is Old Testament. And for, you know, some of you are just reading the Bible for the first time. So this is old, oops, Old Testament, my Bible. <laughs> no, Bible cover, yeah. So this is the Old Testament, this is the New Testament. He was saying that all of this, everything in here, the writings from Moses, the Pentateuch, the prophets, the Psalms, he said, it's all about me. And he was probably going like in, in detail. I mean, he had a long time, you know. And he was probably going in, in detail like Genesis. Maybe he was unveiling to them, oh yeah, you know, Genesis 2, tree of life, that's me. I'm the tree of life. You know, or maybe because they didn't recognize him yet. So maybe he didn't say that. Maybe he said, oh, the tree of life is the Messiah. He, he's, he's, the, he's the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of man, the son of God. And they probably went to Exodus, talked about the Passover lamb. Oh, yeah, Passover lamb, that's also, that's the, uh, that's the Messiah, who according to the book of Daniel was going to be cut off and crucified. You know, he probably just went through it, just like went through it, went through it. And he's like, it's, it's all about the Messiah. And then eventually, when he was in the house with those two disciples, he broke the bread. They were about to eat. He broke the bread. And then it's like, it's like the veil was taken away. And they were like, it's Jesus. And then all of a sudden he disappeared. Just that. Because on that day, that was the day of his resurrection. When he resurrected, he had become a life-giving spirit. Amen. So he, he could do that. He could be like, he could appear and disappear, and he can still do that too, right now if he wanted to with us, but I think that was a, a special little dispensation, you know, to strengthen those new believers, because yeah. he had been with them, and just they were used to being with Jesus in the flesh all the time, just yeah. like, you know, just like Jesus and John, you know, they were just there. John was used to just being with Jesus like yeah. in that way, but after he died and resurrected, he was the life-giving spirit, right. and it was different. Now the disciples had to get to know Jesus in a spiritual way. And that's what we're doing today. Have you seen Jesus with these two eyes, with your, with your physical eyes? But have you ever seen Jesus? I think you have. With the psychological eyes in your heart, you've seen him. That's why in the Bible it says, we see Jesus crowned with glory and honor, right? In the book of Hebrews. Okay. Anyway, um, that's a little bit about the written word. It testifies concerning the Lord Jesus. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of those verses, uh, you know, in 2 Timothy, 2 Peter, 
Luke, those ones, that's referring to the Old Testament being the word of God, the scriptures. But then look at Colossians 1, 24, 25. Um, near the end there, Paul talks about, he's the one who wrote this verse. He talks about that he was, um, he became a minister according to the stewardship of God. Uh, and it says, which was given to me for you to complete the word of God. So the apostles, they completed the word of God, the divine revelation. Wow, the Lord showed them so much more, you know, showed them God's eternal economy and so many things. Okay, very good. My time is out, done. But this last section, let, let's read Roman 2. Go. Christ is the living word of God. Wow. Let's read Revelation 19.13. And he is clothed with a garment dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. So this is referring to the Lord Jesus when he comes back. At that war of Armageddon in the Bible in, in Revelation 19. And this is awesome. It says his name is called the word of God. So Jesus, he's the living word of God, right? Uh, and let, let's, let's go through all the verses. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the word became flesh. And tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the father. Full of grace and reality. Grace and reality came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God the only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is these that testify concerning me, yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Okay, so those verses are really good because obviously in these verses, Jesus He's the word of God. He's the living word of God. And uh, we've covered this, I think, even last summer. We talked about how Jesus being the word of God means he's the, he's the definition, explanation, and expression of God. Okay. And um, circle John 5, 39, 40. Okay. Just circle that. And maybe some can point out the significance of this. Because obviously it's good to search the scriptures, right? I just told you you need to read the Bible. Well, there's, there's a wrong way to read the Bible and there's a right way. Wrong way, the Lord Jesus will rebuke you like he did to these people who were just searching it. And, but there's a right way where if you do it in the right way and find out in your groups that you will, you will have life. You will get to know the Lord Jesus. All right, let's break up the groups for at least 15 minutes. Can we do that?